Hello and welcome to the Literary Lair. After Before Dishonor, I want to take a break from book reviews for a bit, uh, but I do have something planned for today. A while ago, I made a top six Pokemon list, and it was pointed out to me that I forgot to put Legendaries in the list. Uh, I kind of just assumed that I should leave them out since Legendaries shouldn't count, but in effort of fair play, I'm going to do a top 10 legendaries list. Uh, but I'm not doing it alone. But I need someone to help me with this. Hello? Hey, Michael. What are you doing? Uh, hey, Jesse. I'm uh, just about to make a top 10 legendaries list. But it's a lot of work. Uh, do you want to help? Sure. Why not? Great! Let's get started. Number 10. So, where to start? I guess we start at number 10, which is Raikou. I like Raikou because I like electric types, and it was really fun flying around Jeddo Giant Akaksha. And it's a pretty cool concept with the entire legendary dog trio. Raikou. You put Raikou here? What? I like it. Okay. Hold on, I gotta find something positive to say about it. Oh yeah, I like that Pokemon Chronicles episode. That's pretty much it. Oh, I thought we were gonna agree on something. So, on to number nine. Number nine. Number nine is none other than Kyogre. What's your opinion, Jesse? I enjoyed the concept of controlling the oceans. Team Aqua had the right idea here. Besides, water type beats ground on any day of the week. Also, I used the secret bases in Emerald to train my mind enough to level 100 against Kyogre. Well, I liked it because it's a cool Pokemon, and I love its ability, Drizzle. It's better than Ring Dance and lasts a hell of a lot longer. Also, the design with the red and blue is really perfect, and it's a pretty cool callback to the colors of the games. So, I guess we agreed this time. I guess I concur. Kyogre is the first legendary Pokemon I ever encountered, and I enjoyed it almost as much as trying to catch a Chimeco. Number 8. What can we say about this one? Oh yeah, it's freaking Articuno! I love the way that it's a great ice type, and it gets around the weakness to fighting. Oh, and I also like it because you're not led to it directly. They tell you it's somewhere and you go looking for it. Unlike some games... What about Cresselia? Well, you were led there because of the Sailor's Kid. He literally took you there. On a boat. Anyway, back to Articuno. Beautifully designed. Love a good ice type. The only bad part about its typing is its four times weakness to stealth rock and the rock type in general. The journey to find it was like all caves. Infuriating. Articuno is different than the other birds for me because it was the only one I killed. Apparently Dugtrio's Fury Swipes does more when I don't want it to hit five times. 
I killed Moshers by accident. I thought it would come back to life after I left the cave. What? I was a little kid. Anything else on Articuno? What's Articuno? Never mind. Number seven. Number seven is... Really? You picked this Pokemon? Why this one? Thion is freaking adorable. I don't care how useless it is, it's adorable. I have this thing as number three on my personal list. Cuter than Manaphy. I really never liked it and only got it for the Pokedex completion. But why does it exist? Why do we need it? I mean, do people want fire that can be fitted nasally? Did we need Heatran, Darkrai, Cresselia? But I digress. Yeah, I guess we didn't really need those two, but whatever. Let's just get to the next one. Number six. Number six is the legendary from my first Pokemon game, Rayquaza. I really like its story in Sky Pillar, where it lives, is where I caught my first shiny Pokemon. Overall, I just like the idea of the Sky Serpent that joins together the ground and the water. And its role in Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team is pretty cool as well. It gets a plus one automatically for owning the Weather Trio. Great coloring, and the shiny version of it looks awesome. I remember when I first battled it. The music was amazing, and I didn't just want to throw my Master Ball at it. Number five. Number five is... Meloetta? Isn't that a bit of a cheat? It's an event Pokemon from Unova, and I've never used it, but my big question is, what is it? I don't understand the concept. Fave Legendary. Screw Michael for forcing it down. He put it at dead. This is the only Legendary I can stand having an alternate form since the form only lasts for the battle. It is only used with the signature move. Besides, Meloetta is adorable in both forms. Why, Michael? Meloetta is adorable. I just don't get it. What is it? Number four. I bet everyone saw this one coming. Well, why not? Number four is Mewtwo. It's a great Pokemon with a great backstory. Even in the movies, I loved it. It was voiced by Dan Green, for crying out loud. Who? Veteran voice actor was Sonic. Was in Sonic X as Knuckles. Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh. Was also Entei in Pokemon the Movie Three. Professor Birch. Oh yeah, that guy. I like Mewtwo because it was the first badass legendary. I think pretty much defines the psychic type along with the Abra family. In the manga, I love the spoon thing in its story. I also liked it because of its performance in Super Smash Bros. Melee. It was a really fun character to use, and I was really disappointed when they replaced it with Lucario. It was my favorite character in the game next to Pikachu. Well, looks like we both agree on this one. And with that, on to number three. Time for the top three. This choice is Jirachi. I personally enjoy the movie. It's my favorite one. Jirachi has a good color scheme and the ability to grant wishes. My first Pokemon to know Wish. The movie was great, and it's pretty useful. I liked it because it looks great, and the Sugimori artwork is amazing. Plus, the movie was a great story to watch. Yeah, plus that cool way of getting it on the GameCube bonus disc. The only flaw is the whole Comet system. Just goes, BRB, taking a nap, and then 10,000 years later, it doesn't know anything that's going on. Yeah, that was a weird system. What would you wish for, Michael? I would wish for a Leafeon. I would totally wish for Pokemon X and Y, and a 3DS, and Perfect Solitude to play it in. So on to number two. Number two. Mew. The Ancestor of pretty much everything. Yeah, this is a pretty great Pokemon. It's one of the first legendaries, and it's pretty damn cute. Besides being adorable, this Pokemon was a real legend and only catchable through a glitch. I love the lore of this Pokemon, and it represents what all legendaries should be. Uncatchable. However, that's an issue for another video. Right. And it was the Pokemon that inspired all the fans to come up with methods of catching it, even if they didn't always work. But, let's get to the big one. Number one. Number one is Celebi, my favorite legendary Pokemon. First of all, time travel equals boss. 
It's in my second favorite Pokemon movie, and I love the green coloring. Personally, it ranks 6 on my list, but hell, I love it. Couldn't help but cry when it died in Pokemon Forever. It's a great Pokemon, and I love it. I do enjoy time travel, and the fact that it, spoiler alert, allowed Ash and young Oak to meet was awesome. Plus, it would make sense that Oak wanted Ash to be a great trainer, and possibly save Pikachu for him, since he knew that Ash would need it to save Celebi. I like Predestination. Yeah, so, is that it? Yep, those were our top ten legendary Pokemon. So, what do you want to do now? Want to watch some Pokemon? Sure! Which season? Pokemon Chronicles. Whoops, phone's dying. Bye! So, that was the top ten legendaries. I think I'll play some Emerald. Maverick. Ah, oh, hey Maverick, what's going on? I haven't heard from you in a while. Got some bad news. Mike Sino escaped. What? How did he escape? No idea. Someone hacked into the security system. Okay, how long ago did this happen? About a week ago. Okay, so he's been gallivanting around the multiverse for a week. What about his Dalek energy weapon? Does he still have that? That was stolen the week before. Oh, Christ. Oh, Jesus. Well, get back to me if you have any info. Yeah, keep an eye out for him, and I'll tell you if I find him. Bye. Oh, my God. This is not good. <laughs> 